too. Bowl over there too. <laughs> yeah, nice and nice. No way. It's not even December. Oh, it's almost December. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Stay inside and warm. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, happy uh, gobble gobble weekend. What's up, man? <laughs> Hope you got a lot of turkey in your belly. <laughs> oh no, no, no. Yeah. The only HP does sometimes build cheaper products, but it is what it is. Uh well I hope everybody's doing good this weekend. Fortunately, got a cold around here. Not COVID, fortunately, but just got a cold and got it from the kids and dealing with that, so it's been a busy weekend. Um, so I really don't have too much to report on other than I'm working on closing up all the coin stuff now. I'm going to be taking them down here very shortly. So if you uh, haven't got your orders in, which I'm pretty sure everybody here already did. So those will be... Yes. So all of the uh, pre-sale, basically everything got sold. I mean, there was some stuff set aside for the foundation. The foundation did get, um, I think, one extra coin. I'm still trying to figure out if they're going to complete their order or not. But other than that, that's it. Don't say the names yet. Don't say anything about the coins yet. They're still getting bought this weekend. Just wait a lot. No. No, 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 no. Nothing's been done yet. It's all being... But there's a... Yeah, there, we had an export, so it got exported earlier this week, and... Anyways, there was a flaw in the export with Thanksgiving. I haven't had a chance to go back and fix everything. So everything is going to get done this afternoon. Oh. But uh, yeah, so we're going to wrap that up. That was successful. And we've got, uh, oh, an AMA is coming up as well for, we moved it to the 7th. I think we mentioned that in the last meeting for Mike. There's going to do an infographic um, contest, and we need to come up with what we want exactly. Or at least to some kind of framework. So they're asking, because they usually do like a meme contest. Yes, it's at 3 p.m. Uh, UTC, Eastern, or, yeah, 3 p.m. UTC. So we do need to start planning for that. That's coming up. 
Um, everything has just been confirmed as of a couple of days ago, and then we've got um, yes, East Coast, seven a.m. Forget West Coast. Um, but Europe. Not really sure. It's more towards their time, anyways. Uh, so yeah, we just kind of have to have an idea of what we're looking for in an uh, infographic contest, and I'm assuming we could something like what Max is coming up with, or just ways of breaking down portions of the project. Um, so I'm gonna have to either write some kind of description or something to help guide them. If anybody has any input or thought on that, it's something uh, that needs to be finalized. Um, and, and then the AMA questions, you know, the, the AMA and the R and so forth. So if anybody has any ideas for mainly the infographics, I think the questions and stuff, they were just going to do through social media. So. White bit. Andrew, with Andrew from White bit. Yeah, they've, uh, well, they've always been around. They've been very responsive, and they uh, are wanting to help uh, drum up some uh, traffic over there on their side or make sure that people know that they exist and things along those lines. And so the whole idea is they, uh, we were talking, and they said, hey, let's do a free marketing campaign. We'll run it through our house, and you guys just supply the, uh, uh, the prizes. We'll go from there. So it's a good opportunity, plus we have the Marketplace release coming out in three days, four days, something like that. Um, so it should be a really good timing to help explain and uh, show demos on the Marketplace to a different audience. Let's see. Um, I really don't have much else to cover. We do have the big mainnet release to think about. Uh, where is that timer? It's somewhere around here. But uh, main page. Oh, it's only less than 3,000 blocks away. So that's like Tuesday, Monday. Well, we need to figure out a way to make some noise about that a little bit. Ugh. I really like Max's article. Okay, um, I do think we need to work on trying to make sure to share that as much as possible. Max's article, I think, helps explain a lot about it. Uh, and they make as much noise as possible, especially since we have the meeting on Tuesday. Uh, that's usually a busy day. Uh, Mike will probably come in. Uh, hopefully we can do some live demos or tests if it's live at that point. So, Santos, can you be here to record stuff? I wouldn't be surprised if we could do some stuff like that. I'm not really planning it, but just... For a meeting day on Tuesday, just something on the fly. Just thinking, you know, if it's we get made that, it looks like it's gonna be Monday, Tuesday. I gotta figure it out exactly. Um, we're gonna have stuff that we can show people, demos, and, or at least you know, something along those lines. So hopefully, we can get a recording of it. Uh, does anybody know if they built it into the GUI yet, or is it only in the command?
family. Uh, what are we talking about? The uh, revocation? Vault and uh, Marketplace, really? The two main upgrades we've got coming up this week. As I understood, uh, Michael Jr. is working all out to get that implemented into uh, the GUI wallet. Uh, it should be uh, released around the time that uh, the, the uh, network upgrade happens. So, okay. work in progress. And as usual, it'll be released when it's ready. Okay. <laughs> so maybe Tuesday, like we were thinking, we should have a, I'm guessing the fourth or the upgrade will happen by then. Uh, and hopefully we'll have a wallet upgrade by then and we can have some visuals. But I'm sure people could do it otherwise in the command line. Uh, all right. Well, I really don't have much else to think about. If anybody has any ideas to try to get this out or thoughts, we'll just try to work on the new the usual avenues um, I mean, this is good stuff I just think that people are going to have to see it to understand it definitely true um, right. well, I had, had a quick one for you, Rosa. Um, I thought that Max's um, compare and contrast charts are very, very useful, and they've been, you know, very helpful to a lot of people that have been, uh, you know, expressing um, their thoughts because people have trouble understanding Ferris that we know. Um, comparing it to other protocols is extremely helpful. And I think that uh, being able to also show comparative costs, because, you know, one of the things that we hold out, of course, is that it's much cheaper, as well as being more secure and more complete and all these other things is and I know we've got a fee chart, but I think that a lot of people don't realize the, you know, the difference in when this is all done, the costs of all the various uh, actions that one can take. So my suggestion would be a compare compare the costs of these uh, uh, the, the various network to ethereum and uniswap and all those other things because that's a big motivator for people i would assume yeah dude uh if you just showed them if you said you know look this is what happens if you buy a ten dollar item with ethereum this is what happens when you buy one with virus you see the difference now <laughs> You see the less fees now? <laughs> That's a good idea, though. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think if you show a pie chart, even, you know, that would just <laughs> how about the fee difference. Oh, yeah, if the pie chart point. shows less fees, yeah, it's the same thing. I think we have to focus on the economic benefits because, look, ultimately, the adoption of, of the technology is going to come down to who can compete with the centralized uh, alternatives. So, you know, blockchain is never going to succeed as a technology if the centralized solutions are always going to be cheaper um, at, in terms of for the creators uh, as well as for the users. So we have to find a way to communicate that clearly and simply uh, across different networks, including the generation three cent centralized networks like Solana, or uh, Cosmos, etc. I think we need to have, we need to pick our peer group and decide. And I think I would take Polka uh, or Dot or whatever they want to call themselves. I would take Polka Dot. I would take Cosmos. I would take Solana. I would take Ethereum. And I would take Bitcoin as the comparators. I don't know um, if anyone else has got other thoughts on that.
I think that's a great idea. Of the ones you pick. I mean, the only if if you wanted for some reason to show the the currency with the least least amount of transaction fees, you know, you bring up Tron or something, but just so you wouldn't look like you're trying to, you know, uh, embellish embellish that, you know, we're so great you could put a little. Well, these guys, you know, they're not really they're not really compared to us, but it is another cryptocurrency, and you know, it is their own network, and their transfer their transaction fees are lower. But look how much lower our, ours are compared to, you know, the big ones or the, the you know what I mean? I think I think in picking uh, I uh, think cohorts, I think in picking cohorts, you want to pick the people that you believe are your comparators, generally speaking. Oh, you know. But I do take your point. Uh, right, right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I want to add to that. Uh, once uh, we have PVAS, uh, and when that's fractally scalable, uh, if any of those networks, of those fractal networks, gets too expensive, the money will flow somewhere else because the capabilities are identical. Uh, it will just flow to where uh, the costs are lowest. And that's the biggest advantage of a fractally uh, scalable network. On the other hand, uh, if you start comparing features, um, yes, it's always good to include Bitcoin and Ethereum because everyone references Bitcoin and Ethereum, and that's everyone uh, some somebody can relate to. Uh, however, if you are uh, comparing IDs, uh, you'll need change that work on good ID solutions and then show why they're better than, than those specific solutions. Uh, for automated market making, the same thing. And for every aspect of what we do, which we all have in one chain, and others have been focusing up and they have just that part in their chain, um, that is something. And in the end, we could uh, make a general comparison uh, okay, we have these all these capabilities, and then a list of uh, chains below it. And well, most of them ha are going to have crosses under the capabilities because they don't have it. I think that's excellent to have a tick chart that does show exactly that we are uh, a holistic solution that is uh, all at layer one versus uh, others who've got you know a mix and match. And I do agree with you that we need to do separate um, comparator charts for AMMs and liquidity pools and all of those things, just because we are asked those questions frequently. Um, and people do have trouble understanding unless it's presented in an easy compare and contrast fashion. Um, I really do believe that. And the other thing, just to say for marketing purposes, is that, um, you know, I continue to speak on Clubhouse on tech news around the world and have done a few um, different sort of uh, whatever they call them calls. Um, and they've added uh, me to their um, group so that I can open up rooms using tech news around the world um, uh, as well. So and and Cheryl, who leads that or one of the, she leads it with Tyler has offered that when we are ready, that we can uh, use her network to publicize, as well as the tech news around the world network. She's got a big uh, um, community of startup uh, people, et cetera. So um, I just wanted to say that we've got access to that, as well as Bitcoin beginners, of course. And we should also be thinking about um, Twitter spaces um, as a way to talk to the world. And, and I think that as we near completion of all of the, as we near PBAS, um, I think being able to get out and speak to people in the public domain is going to become uh, increasingly important for us, just as, a, as an aside. Well, I have this idea. I don't know if it's any good. I don't know if this is the place to to say it, but I think there should be on Discord on this, you know, on the, a channel that uh, 
it's be for um, freelancers wanting to work and get paid in Verus. I think that would be pretty cool. You know what I mean? Like you We're always write... looking for talent, that's for sure. Oh, like let's say you write, you're a copywriter and you write blog posts or whatever. And you go on this channel and you're like, look, you want me to do some writing for your company or whatever you whatever you want, you give me you pay me in Verus and I'll be happy to do it for you. Is that ridiculous or um no, that's not ridiculous, but it's exactly the opposite way of uh, how Verus usually uh, operates. Basically you write a piece and if it's uh, as good as you say it is, then uh, generally, the foundation will provide a bonus to that person writing it. Oh no, 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 no! I mean, I mean for <clears throat> um, let's say uh, you you're running a, a gardening blog, nothing to do with Varus, but it's your blog, it's your website, and you want some, you want you want to go out and find a freelancer to write an article for you. Well, you can go to this channel and find people that have skills that will work for Varus. Understand what I'm saying? That they aren't gonna what they're working on isn't gonna be for Varus. They're just gonna get paid in Varus. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, what you mean is uh, to get a uh, Varus payment ecosystem going. Yeah, that too, but that, I think that it would attract new people, a lot of new people. Maybe, you know what I mean? There's freelancers that, you know, are struggling or whatever, or not struggling, or just really interested in cryptocurrency or, you know, and uh, yeah. they've probably found no, I know. that they get paid that way. Yeah, but yeah. I know what you mean. Actually, we have a, a community member that has in his name will work for Verus. So it's okay. not a new concept. Yeah. Um... <laughs> See? He's yeah. not afraid. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, actually, I do pay uh, sometimes people in Paris here uh, locally uh, simply because uh, they do me a favor and I give them some Paris. They don't know what to do with it. And I <laughs> say, okay, just wait. And one day you'll be amazed <laughs> so that's smart yeah hey it works <laughs> no, uh, however uh, um, uh, there's only one but uh, in order for uh, that to take off people need to see the value of Varus they need to want to have Varus uh, it, it needs to be an attraction right so uh, I'm, it's I'm a sound go idea go. don't I, I don't want to shoot down your uh, idea uh, but it does require Verus to be a bit more in the world than it is now. Okay. So, uh, well, you, uh, preparations never heard. Uh, by the time uh, Verus takes up, you can uh, put such a, a platform uh, online. I think you would do good. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I, I, I agree that uh, I agree with Oink and I, uh, and, and I, as you were saying it, I have an ETH uh, core developer that I've been trying to bring on who just sent me a message on Twitter. Um, and um, I wanted to find the spec for um, that Mike put up for the ETH bridge completion um, to share with him. I wondered if you could point me to uh, where Mike put together the list of things that he was looking for um, jobs that needed doing um was it in general discussion i'm just trying to share with him the, the sort of spec that we want so it's kind I'm of looking right in the right now. direction i thought it was in marketing but I'm, I'm looking right now i know where it was i will just uh, post it to you uh nicholas Thank you very much. A any of the roles that you guys think that an ETH core developer would be uh, useful for, but it would be great if we could get one of them to come over and help and be part of it. No, thanks very much, guys.
Got it. Thanks so much, Lynn. Okay, do we have any more uh, discussions uh, or, or ideas, subjects, anyone? Looking for the unmute button. Sorry. Um, no, I don't have anything other at this point. Uh, I just think we need to try to make as much noise as possible with the marketplace coming. And, you know, like I said, other ideas for the infographic contest, which I think we kind of briefly covered some thoughts. Uh, I think that's going to be maybe more for Max. But uh, I'll try to relay this information to Max or if anybody else wants to feel free. But no, I don't have anything else at this time. Lynn, because you seem to be able to reference the uh the Discord better than anyone else. Can you find that um, that was that was definitely where Mike called out the two devs required for various D and various other bits and bobs. But it, can you find? Do you know where the one is where he talks about um, the Solidity developer? I think Creative Ninja responded to it uh, or spoke about it. But I don't know if you know where that spec was. Sorry to ask again. He talks about needing a genius Solidity developer or something. So. No, sorry, I don't remember this one. I was mentioning somebody being a wizard. That's right, that's exactly it. How does one search for, for wizard? Yes. You just simply, uh, yeah, you you simply just wave your magic wand. No, actually, if you go right at the top, it's the first. If you type wizard, it's the first uh, thing in marketing in the marketing channel. Just go on the top in the search there. Yeah, seen it too. Wizard was the clue that we needed. Yeah. <laughs> That's a password. They just linked it. Look at the marketing channel. Rosa, you, you mentioned the article by Max. Can you come and somebody show me what that is? that article that he just uh, tweeted and uh, posted in the uh, marketing for Tweet and Share channel. Oh, okay. I'll start. I clicked on like 15 Twitter links. I couldn't figure out which one it was. Thanks. Uh, 
Um, Santos, you were just talking about an AMA or something. Did I uh, get that right? Will there be something like this? I didn't know about it up to now. Okay. Why could the exchange? Correct. Why bit the exchange? And it's on the December 7th, um, which would be at 3 p.m. Uh, UTC time. So we need to start thinking about making graphics for it. Uh, we're going to have an infographic contest that will start with them. And we need some sort of direction for that infographic contest. Uh, so if anybody has any thoughts or ideas, but I think we kind of briefly covered that earlier. I'm also thinking this Tuesday after the release, uh, it sounds like we may have a GUI release and we should be able to film some demos or some uh, examples of what we're, what, what's new, what's live. So we'll see where that goes as well. We're planning that on the fly. Well, it starts to get busy as soon as we think about wrapping it up. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want to start chit chatting about anything else? You know, people, <laughs> people are here, right? What do you guys say? I went to a football game for my kid the other day. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what? Oh, God, I don't even want to talk about it. Surrounded by fires. Now we definitely welcome everybody. Uh, just kind of a quick recap. Uh, we kind of went through the uh, for the marketing meeting. We discussed the coins and uh, you know how basically they're wrapped up at this point and we're moving forward with them. The orders will be put in next week. The uh, uh, mainnet launch, which is coming Monday, uh, so that was just tweeted out. To please retweet and share. We also need to get everybody else to talk about it as much as possible. Tuesday, we're talking about a some sort of demo. We're expecting a way of doing a, a GUI version of the vault and a GUI version of the uh, marketplace, possibly. So we're going to do that one on the fly. December 7th, uh, Mike's doing an AMA with WhiteBet with Andrew uh, on Telegram. We're going to have a contest with them, which will be two. One will be a, a question contest. And the second one will be a uh, uh, infographic contest, uh, which will be marketed through their channels and so forth. Uh, we can do a possible follow-up uh, version with Andrew and R uh, channel if we would like as well. Something to think about on the back burner. Uh, there was talk about different uh, infographics that Max has made and some new ones, uh, especially one on price um, and how useful those have been. Uh, I think as a quick recap, that might cover it. Anything I forget? If there's nothing else to, we'll go ahead and think about wrapping up the meeting or if there's any other thoughts or questions. I guess, uh, you know, there's incentives for miners to join Varus. There's incentives for people that want to stake. You know, they're staking extra benefits or whatever. There's, you know, is there any, and there's, and there's, uh, is there a list of benefits or incentives for to target the developers? 
you know, the developers that want to go out to work on another blockchain like Barrels? Is there like a special reason why a developer would want to work on Barrels and not another one? I can think of a, a couple of incentives, uh, like uh, working on a project uh, that does not have any uh, middlemen, uh, that puts the power back into the hands of the people, your bank, the lowest fees, uh, basically doing good for the world. Uh, that's one incentive. Uh, I know a lot of people think about financial incentives, and I suspect you meant that. Uh, also working in the community, um, that kind of stuff, uh, getting recognized for what you do. Uh, as for a financial incentive, uh, I think it, uh, it's safe to say that uh, the Veriscoin Foundation generally recognizes uh, valuable contributions and rewards that with a bonus and that can be a recurring bonus that can be a one-time bonus it really depends on what it is uh, i'm not part of the foundation so i have no say in it um and what you see every now and then as well if there's uh, something that needs to be done people do uh, either a fundraise or people get a tip from uh, someone else because they value their work. Uh, there used to be a guy in uh, Discord uh, two years ago that every time I answered it, I got uh, five verse as a tip, which I found completely unnecessary, but he felt he should be, uh, it was worth it. So if you're talking about financial incentives, um, if the work is worth it, you don't need to worry. I think that it's also in the design as well, Oink, that um, of course, PBAS, Public Blockchains as a Service, Skunk, is designed so that people can create a token or a currency or a public blockchain without needing to, uh, you know, to build it all themselves and that uh, they have their own ability to, um, to set their own agenda within that. And I think that that is going to be a huge incentive for developers who may not have the core skills, but have a desire and have skills to build on top of uh, a, a protocol uh, like Verus. So I think that one of the big attractions is going to be the speed and simplicity of using the system once it all reaches, uh, PBAS reaches mainnet. I, I don't know, Oink, whether you think that's relevant well now i uh, yeah that's definitely relevant if you want to set up a project if you want to uh, develop something uh you have a solid foundation to start from you don't have to start from ground zero you can start uh at our level zero uh, you don't have to invent the blockchain yourself and uh, have it do you can just start it uh, with pretty base if, if you know something about blockchain the knowledge you need is pretty basic. It's just putting in the right parameters in the, in, the, in the right place, and you got a yeah, you get a uh, you got a, a blockchain that does what you want to do. So uh, that takes generally an hour or two if you know what you're doing. If you have to ask help, there are people willing to help with that, and then you can focus on what you can do, what you're good at building that application that you want on the blockchain. Right. The, uh, it, that's, uh, that's, yeah, that's, def that sounds like an amazing incentive. It is, uh, how, how about in the, in the competitive landscape though, is, are there a lot of other cryptocurrencies offering this PBAS? Not that we know of. Oh, say, so that's, that should be like the number one thing to advertise to find talent then, right? The, the viewpoint is um, that when it's at mainnet, uh, it will be something that will draw a lot of people and will also create a lot of demand for the coin because it, uh, and also IDs, because you need to have an ID to launch uh, a currency and that there, there will be a, a cost to launching a currency and or token or a public blockchain. 
and the fact that you don't have to know all the base you don't have to do all the hard work to get to that point is a giant advantage for people who have development talent but not necessarily the talent to build their entire infrastructure definitely or the time yeah okay yeah and then in that respect, we have community members that are already already building uh, tools to uh, support any PBAS blockchain. Uh, for example, uh, the explorers uh, can be integrated into your uh, own blockchain. The explorers we have on GitHub. Uh, we have a bootstrap a bootstrap script, so you can boot uh, supply bootstraps to your uh, PBAS chain community. Um, that is written for various but it also works with all the PBAS change, that kind of stuff. So, and, and that's all a community contribution. So we are already uh, expanding the uh, basic needs. And of course, uh, if you don't want to run any service yourself to, to, to start up or anything, there are always uh, community members that say, okay, I, uh, I can run a seed node. Um, for, uh, I don't know, uh, say 10 virus a month, because it can just uh, be popped into one of my existing servers, that kind of stuff. And uh, they can also say, okay, uh, I don't want to run my own Explorer. Can somebody host my Explorer and maintain it? So you don't have to look at it, just uh, shift some virus uh, every now and then. So that's also possible. So you can, if you start up a, a PBAS blockchain, uh, you can do everything yourself. You can uh, put in your own uh, uh, infrastructure. You can even make it private to run it just in, inside your company that is not publicly available. Uh, but then you'll need to uh, do the explorers, uh, etc. You need to do all that. You can also say, okay, I want to run it publicly on my own infrastructure. Or you can say to someone in the community that has service and that is willing to provide such a service, do you want to do that for me? And I'll pay you. Hmm. So it's 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 quite a big range. Hmm. I feel like a salesman now. By the way, <laughs> I know, I know. It's it's to you, sir. Feeling, I know, <clears throat> but uh. I was just curious. I don't know if this is possible or whatever, but I've got I've got a few good ideas, and uh, you know I can't do them by myself. I can't do all this stuff by myself. But um, is there a way to somehow have an idea and have people help you do it, and then have them have it so they can't take just take your idea? That, that you can share your ideas, and I think you've shared some ideas in uh, PBAS uh, Ideas channel, I think it's called, PBAS Project Ideas. You can't yeah. stop uh, anyone from, uh, obviously, taking one's ideas uh, because uh, you are putting them into the public domain. But if you can't achieve them without assistance, then, you know, that's the, that's the chicken and the egg problem of any ideas versus execution is you need to get people to think that it's a good idea and then you need to uh, inspire them to join you in um, helping you achieve those ideas and that's the whole community approach is that okay. i don't think any of us could do uh, this without each other and that's sort of the idea the whole purpose is that if you are exposed to the underlying protocol then you get the benefit of everybody's good ideas and then if someone demonstrates capabilities then it would make sense to get behind them um, and participate with them, support them. And, um, you know, you don't, you, you would have ownership and you would have involvement because you'd have exposure to the fact that something successful would be built on top of the protocol. So it's really about understanding that everyone benefits from the expansion of the network. Right, right. Yeah, I understand that. I, I was just wondering if, somebody figured out a way to you know around it but obviously it's it's one of those things you can't stop but I would, i'm just trying to wonder um, what would well, go ahead yeah just to interject we have a blockchain which is an immutable ledger 
uh, if you want to share an idea, uh, you could uh, put such a thing onto the blockchain, uh, for example, in uh, a virus ID profile, and then you can always refer to that as, hey, that's my idea. Um, I was first, um, but that's more for a legal uh, thing if you want to uh, take it to court and say, no, that's my idea, I was first, see here, I published it, and it's never been everywhere, uh, anywhere first. So that would be one thing. Oh, wow. uh, and, that, and another thing uh, would be, um, but that's, m yeah, I don't really want to talk about it because it's more illegal, is uh, bind someone by a uh, mutual non-disclosure agreement. But yeah, that's how they do you gotta talk to law you gotta you gotta talk to lawyers about that because they know that a lot better than I do. Um, but here in the community, we've had examples where uh, two parties were working on, on the same project, independent from each other. By the way, uh, one of those projects, uh, the uh, the developer took off with the work and was never heard from them again. But at least we got one of them projects having a uh, working product. And that's uh, the, uh, the so-called Craigslist, the uh, Virus ID Explorer, right? where you can look up the Virus IDs. I, <laughs> I, you refreshed my memory yesterday, so it's all on you. <laughs> I don't even remember no, what that was. Yeah. <laughs> No, neither do I, but it was. <laughs> remember now, I remember now. Wow. This is, uh, Hard, hard stuff to take. Um, in terms of the um, the MNDAs and things like that, I think that one should be aware that you know uh, I use those documents uh, often because I have a, a obviously a, a company as well as a contributing to the community. But I find that you know you need to be aware that they're only as good as your ability to enforce uh, those types of documents. And you know, as as uh, Oink rightly said. If you can, you know, show prior art, you can essentially uh, invalidate somebody else's claim if they have, uh, you know, tried to um, patent that 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 information. But again, those things are limited by you know the traditional legal structures, and uh, they're painful and they're expensive. So that's just my advice, my two cents. Oh well, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, and if you want to have an example of uh, what an ID profile uh, looks like, uh, go to the website, go to the virus lookup, and type in either uh, Mike at or Craig on it, or Oink at, by the way. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm creating one right now. Um, and then you can see what a, a profile can do. Uh, they're all pretty different. So that gives you an idea of uh, what's possible. You can uh, basically put in your, your uh, permanent pro uh, social profile there. Uh, you're the only one with a virus ID that can alter it. Yeah, that's uh, definitely on, on my list. Making virus ID, figure it out, you know. Creating a profile is, at this moment, not for the faint of heart. gonna run thanks so much everybody all right guys
I was waving goodbye to him, but uh, my mic was muted. Yeah. Um, anything else? I know why you're all quiet. You all stuff your faces with uh, turkey. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm going to drop out as well, guys. Appreciate everybody coming. I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday on the big release day. Uh, if you haven't uh, picked up your coins, now is your chance. I'm about to close up everything this evening. See you. Yep, have a nice day. I'm going to drop off too, unless people have uh, questions specifically for me. Yep. Going once, going Bye. twice. Okay, bye guys. Joe was talking. Never mind. See you guys. See you, man. Good meeting you. Oh, yeah.